So I choose not to put my family situation in public. Because listen, when them devils can't, when they can't get to you, they're going to get to somebody close to you. Do you really think I'm going to bring my woman on camera, bro? I'm a man. Men don't bring women on cameras, bro. And that's just how I look at things. You know, I like to keep my family protected. Bro, you don't bring a lady on camera, bro. That's not how men move. I just don't choose to operate that way. Unless, let's say for instance, one of my wives is already a public figure. One of my wives is already doing her thing on social media. Then it is what it is. Bro, we, we gotta sit down and have a conversation about this, fam, before we start cooking. Bro, you don't bring your woman, bro. She's pregnant, fam. Remember? I would like individuals to get that off of their chest. Put everything out in the open. And in case you don't know, yes, I'm pro polygyny. It grows economics. It grows family. It grows legacy. It grows dynasty. It creates longevity for generations to come. As I have stated before, polygyny is a package deal. I did a seven part series on this, providing plenty of scriptures. This false doctrine is one of the reasons why I compare Newbury to the dishonorable Elijah Muhammad. Both of these men love money, both are willing to build a cultivated community that makes people feel comfortable and a part of something. Both believe in having multiple wives, and both of them actively sought out clout that could increase their following. In Elijah Muhammad's case, it was Malcolm X who single-handedly built the FOI temples through his ability to draw large crowds and display leadership that Elijah Muhammad did not have. In Newbreed's case, it is common for content creators on YouTube to network via common interests from their respective audiences. But Newbreed is trying to turn social media into something more tangible in unlimited potential farms, which obviously requires a multi-million dollar initiative and potentially 20 other large platforms to raise that kind of money. Now, Elijah Muhammad opened up temples solely the charisma and magnetic force named Malcolm X, using, of course, religion to do that. More people equal more temples, which means more money. But when Malcolm X unveiled Elijah Muhammad's adultery, he was excommunicated from the fruit of Islam or the FOI. Can you see the parallels with New Breed and Elijah Muhammad? Money, sex, religion, and power with religion as the front, okay? That's all it is, is a front. But money, sex, and power are the roots of their ambition. And um, only, and I mean only, when you're a man who truly lays your mark on this earth, and I mean through your offspring, because that's laying a mark on this earth. Contrary to popular belief, Contrary to all these dating coaches and internet phenomenons and these relationship advisors. Contrary to their thoughts and opinions, it's all about creating life. It's all about family. It's all about making babies. It's all about leaving your mark. Well, that's a lie. We are to have the mark of Christ and he will reward us in heaven. Everyone loves to use the 12 tribes of Jacob as an example for how we ought to be. And they use this with King Solomon when they want to preach prosperity, not understanding that God raised these men up for that particular purpose during that time. And God was exhibiting his sovereignty through these men. For example, the 12 tribes of Jacob, each tribe sacrificed 12,000 firstborn sons to the Most High. And that eventually manifested into the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation chapter 14. Okay, that's an entirely different covenant under the law of Moses. We don't do child sacrifice today. Okay, because sin has accumulated and even caused Christ to be separated from his deity for our sake. 
This is why we are also to lay down our lives, according to Luke 9, 23. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Raising your seeds up. The more the merrier. Y'all got to understand. The first commandment known to man is to live fruitful and to multiply. Now. The Old Testament being a shadow of the New Testament, fruit now refers to the deeds and the doctrine that men practice. God spoke this to pure vessels. Most of the women must be virgins, and we need our own land and the practice of those Old Testament consecrations in order to practice polygyny and be holy before God. Okay, you would have to fulfill all the law of Moses to practice polygyny you must remember that concubines were to be assigned and the law of jealousy must be in full effect without the peril of matriarchal rule you cannot have the system of child support and alimony in the practice of polygyny because god is not the author of confusion under the law of jealousy a man was entitled to try his wife in court before the elders if he had suspicion or if he had evidence that his wife had committed adultery or if a spirit of jealousy came upon him while discerning his wife, okay? Of course, if she was caught or it was proven that she committed adultery, she could be stoned to death, all right? This is obviously also not the case today. It's to live fruitful and to multiply, but Satan always got to combat that. That's why in the hood, you got abortion clinics. In the suburbs, you got fertility clinics because there's always been war with who takes the throne, who populates the most. And it just so happens that our people have some very strong genetics. We got that melanin. Again, in my series, Polygyny is a Package Deal, I talked about the eviction notices of Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17, Deuteronomy 28, and a host of other passages which represent God evicting the children of Israel because of their disobedience. They were evicted from their land where they practice their culture. All right? So the culture comes with the land. Those of you brothers who's been asking me why is polygyny sinful, it's all a packaged deal. The fact that we are in captivity proves that polygyny is no longer acceptable as holy to God. Under the old covenant, a person would be put to death for sacrificing children to Molech. As you heard Newbreed make reference to the abortion clinics in this modern day wicked society. The heathen nations will be judged for sanctioning the genocide of our children. Rely on big wigs and big business. So what you're saying is, since we can rely on the system now, a system that's rapidly declining, a system that is rapidly plummeting and falling, since we have this system that's crashing, that's your reason that polygyny is not needed now? The person who made that comment should have used the scriptures to prevent the devil from playing both sides. Those who ascribe to polygyny use the dictates of this evil matriarchal kingdom to justify us building families through polygyny because we should not trust the government raising our children. The problem is you must also be consecrated entirely from the heathens to partake in those old covenant rituals that sanctified the blood loss of the woman because life of the flesh is in the blood. See, it's all about holiness with God. And many do not understand why God permitted even child sacrifice. Because he's God. Those rituals also were a package deal with the practice of polygyny. Okay, because the Most High had consecrated the children of Israel from the other heathen nations. This is not the case here in the Americas. As for what they are doing to our children... This is why the Most High is coming to make a new heaven and a new earth and impose recompense on these heathens, on their children, their wives, their sons, their daughters, 
the Most High will impose recompense against them for their iniquity. And he's going to redeem us, his chosen people. Okay, and there's not going to be some land initiative or some indignant practice of whoredom disguised as polygyny that's going to sustain us until he comes back. The, the book of Isaiah chapter 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles and run and not be weary. All right. Makes no sense. When you go to Isaiah chapter four, verse one, it reads, and in that day, seven women will cleave to one man saying let us eat our own bread let us wear our own apparel let us be called by thy name to take away thy reproach that does not mean what they are doing is righteous according to that passage in isaiah several women can cling to one man and one can be a baby mama the other can be a side piece uh, the other can be a mistress hoping that he leaves his wife okay all of this is a generational curse that came upon Eve for having sex with the serpent, who was a fallen angel. Okay, again, you got to ask yourself, how did the woman become cursed with a menstrual cycle and nine months of pregnancy just from eating a fruit? After Eve sinned, God said her desire shall be for her husband. The book of Deuteronomy 22 talks about how the woman is humbled by the man even if he forces himself upon her okay in addition to that the woman having to compete with other women is also a humbling experience okay kevin samuels was notorious for saying buy a dog and die alone now that concept actually refers more to those who practice monogamy because God intentionally meant for the woman to be penalized for her wrongdoing. Again, let's look at the fruits. How many women in this modern day wicked society, how many women are virgins? Mean and listen. Yes, you have a society now where it's geared towards feminism. And it's giving women more opportunities than they had in ancient days. See, back then, women didn't work for, their, for themselves. They didn't earn a living on their own. They didn't make, uh, you know, their own money. It was forbidden in those times. They had to rely on a man to be that head of household, that leader that's taking care. In this day, when it says in that day in scripture, it's talking about now. In that day, it said, look, let us work our own let us do this we may even live in separate apartments we may live in a separate house but let me be with this man to take away our reproach meaning to take away take away their trespasses and their sins again those seven women are clinging to one man hoping that they are chosen to be the only one woman he marries this is why the scripture must be read in context and contrast to first corinthians chapter seven verse 1 through 9. I went over this passage in my seven-part series. It emphasizes because of sexual immorality, let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Okay, so those women mentioned in Isaiah 4.1 were sexually immoral and they had condemnation. Okay, the Apostle Paul is introducing nothing but new revelation. That's why he was anointed an apostle. He's not just repeating what Moses said. This is why the Pharisees pretty much had a bounty on the Apostle Paul's head. Because he said, everything I learned was counted worthless. The entire Bible is construed through the law, the prophets, and the apostles. And again, the apostles were men condemned to death by God. Because he gave them new revelation, which makes them an apostle. I know that the biblical truth I speak can be dangerous to, to my life. So I choose not to put my family situation in public. Because listen, when them devils can't, when they can't get to you, they're going to get to somebody close to you. And that's just how I look at things. You know, I like to keep my family protected. 
Now, I understand Nubri made this video three years ago, but if you stand on principle, don't be a hypocrite. Everyone knows now that recently he brought his wife in public for the world to see how she was mistreated by Ringo TV and his wife, according to Nubri. And there were videos of people giving testimony of how they saw your wife working hard at the farm. And obviously you came on camera with your wife to go over the whole dilemma with Ringo TV. So people really want to just see if you practice what you preach, but that's your prerogative. And, um, but that's just how I get down. You know, it's nothing wrong if a brother want to put his family out there and show what he got going on. I just don't choose to operate that way. Unless, let's say for instance, one of my wives is already a public figure. One of my wives is already doing her thing on social media. Then it is what it is. You understand? That's a contradiction. That comes across as you told her you prefer to keep your family private and she obliged. Okay, the scriptures say the head of the woman is the man. Period. And it's certain things that it's not going to be a breaking point when it comes to building a relationship with a man they get to an age where they realize a man can have a family a man can have a family on this side of the town and still satisfy their needs on that side of the town that's a trick of the devil and notice whenever he argues for polygyny he has a vantage point from the lens of the woman more so than the word of god the needs of the woman can represent the deeds of the flesh, bruh. You're not well studied on the generational curses against the woman. And still guide them. They see that men are actually capable of this type of leadership. And it took them age, knowledge, wisdom, instead of just going from man to man to man to man to man to man. They're realizing that, hey, it's time for me to slow it down and stop. Find me one gentlemen that i can get with and keep it there and that's how they move it instead of making the same mistakes that all of these married folks are creating or making and that mistake is leaving a man over infidelity not understanding the true nature of a man a man is primitive a man has testosterone um a man is naturally designed to take on more than one woman. Science tells you that. A man is also spiritually more stronger than the woman. Okay? To whom much is given, much is required. Why wouldn't the most high God... God don't make no mistakes. I want y'all to listen. Why wouldn't the most high God give men a biological clock? Why wouldn't he make it so he get with this one woman and, hey, when he turns 40, 45, hey, he cannot impregnate another sister. That's because the Most High is all about life. The Most High is pro-life. He didn't create men to be emasculated by this Western world. Again, because God is spirit and created man in his image and likeness, men are stronger spiritually and are able to exercise self-control. So actually, the older we get, we're supposed to fast more than we did when we were younger, in our youth. This is why the laws of the New Covenant revolve around death to self, crucifying the flesh, exercising self-control, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit. We've made that mistake of being emasculated by sinning and trespassing, and not honoring our God, not honoring our law, statutes, and commandments. But when the curses is lift, the veil has to completely come off. You cannot take heed to the Western ways of life. Bro, monogamy is not a Western concept. In the beginning, God made them male and female. So, polygyny was always sinful because there was monogamy before there was polygyny. And when Adam and Eve were monogamous, they were pure. They were without sin, okay? Polygyny was always sinful, but God established laws for the Israelites for them to practice and limit the contagion of sin. Obviously, today we cannot keep those laws. It's impossible. So how do you account for concubines? So you brothers who's going through the chat 
in the comments, I want you guys to ask New Breed that. How do you account for concubines today? Because obviously it's the law that concubines must be accounted for. Okay, and I'm not talking about human opinion. Okay, you hear Ringo TV and New Breed talking about, well, if you're going to deal with this woman, you got to let them know. No, that's not the law of God. Okay, that's just you having your own understanding with a woman. Is that written in the scriptures that that's how you deal with that woman? Okay, because it's written in the Old Testament how to do so. And of course, again, all of that is a package deal with the laws of marriage, the law of jealousy, all the laws concerning polygyny in the Old Testament, all of the consecrations. All right. You can't just pick and choose what you want to take from that law just because it looks sexy. Okay, so ask New Breed, does he keep that law? Or does he teach those who have concubines to keep that law? Okay, again, this guy really gives Elijah Muhammad vibe. But you only relegate yourselves to one wife. So y'all got to understand the context of Paul's writings. When Paul was writing to the churches... Because that's the proper context, ladies and gentlemen. Paul was writing to the churches. He was giving advice. I already broke down in my series why the kings and prophets had multiple wives. The question you polygynists never answer is why did Paul say a bishop must have one wife? Because if anything, the bishop would be more qualified to have multiple wives. Paul said this. Because the bishop sets the example for other men in the church. Otherwise, no man would ever desire to be a bishop, especially knowing that Moses had multiple wives. Moses had more responsibility than a bishop. Once again, the Apostle Paul is introducing new revelation. And this makes it more clear what he was saying in 1 Corinthians 7. He said, look. All you deacons out there, since it takes so much time, energy, effort, and work to be a deacon, why don't y'all just have one wife? No, you're twisting scripture. God did not anoint the Apostle Paul to give his advice on serious matters like that. In fact, when Paul was given advice, he specified and made it clear, saying, I not the Lord says this, or I, not the Lord says that, okay? Also, Moses and the Levites, again, had more responsibility than a deacon. Under the law of Moses, if the Levites, if they even lit incense in the wrong attire, they would die by fire in the tabernacle of the Lord. These arguments are just futile. And, you know, you'll go to Paul, but you won't go to when the Almighty, when the Almighty proclaimed that Solomon can take on as many wives as he wants, just don't deal with the Gentiles. Okay, and what did Solomon and his descendants do? They continued to marry the foreign women, which led to them serving foreign gods, and in turn, begot their demise in captivity. Okay? I'm can't stress this enough that sin keeps taking things from us all right men once lived to be 900 years old we no longer have that privilege see when y'all bring up king solomon you never talk about the ripple effect of his union to multiple women his women were not taking him to court for child support like our men are being treated in this matriarchal kingdom. Also understand that even the foreign women that King Solomon was, was dealing with were virgins, rest assured. That's why Solomon tolerated them serving foreign gods because they were virgins before he laid with them. And they didn't dare step outside of his marriage to them because the law of jealousy still applied to his time. I mean, think about it. You got the wealthiest man in history with over 600 wives, and all of them were virgins. That's unheard of today. Or you won't go to the fact, to the facts. 
You won't go to King David when he actually committed adultery against a fellow soldier, a warrior, sent him out to war, had him killed and everything, which we're going to go into all these sources, which is the Bible. Sent him out to war, had him killed and everything. And the Most High said to David, he said, look, David, I've already given you multiple women, multiple wives. I've already given you this. David, if you wanted more wives, why didn't you just ask me? You can see that Elijah Muhammad spirit in his eyes. See, a mark of an emerging or eminent cult leader is when the leader pushes the doctrine of polygyny. And he also starts asking for large sums of money from the people to support his lifestyle. But nevertheless, I will continue to break down these heretics in upcoming videos this week. So let me know your thoughts and enjoy the rest of your day.